If you are experiencing collections, then you are not going to want to miss this video. So Capital One has a pretty decent card on the platinum and Capital Pay. So I love to see it. Okay, so as promised, what I have here is called an affidavit of fact and truth. But what I also have here is a 609 letter that is combined in with this affidavit of truth and facts. Now, everybody knows that the 609 letter has been known to get collections removed off of your credit report. About 70% of the time, that is. But I've come up with this new way to combine the fact and truth in with the 609 letter. And the reason why I've combined the fact and truth affidavit in with the 609 letter is because, as I stated on the last video, a fact and truth affidavit can be used in the court of law. That's number one. Number two is the fact and truth affidavit is considered to be the truth until or unless the collection agency or the credit bureau creates a new affidavit of fact and truth to override this fact and truth. Now, if a collection agency has a collection on you and you send in this fact and truth with the 609 letter included in it, nine times out of 10, they are not going to combat the fact and truth because they have to have concrete validation of that account being your account. And if they can't prove that, they're not going to perjure themselves by signing and filling out a court document and have it notarized and sending it back to you saying that this is the truth because they can get sued for that. So it's not going to happen. So this is really like golden. I'm so excited and I know you guys can probably tell that I am so excited about this combination. I just wanted to come on and share it with you. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so of course at the top, um, you'll see where it says Affidavit of Fact and Truth, um, North Carolina Supreme Court. So whatever state you're in, you're going to put whatever state you're in um, for the county of whatever state you're in. Um, here, your name goes here. You are the plaintiff versus, let's just say, Monterey Collection Services as a dependent. Usually, you're going to leave this box over here just as it is unless you have actually taken it a step further and you do have like a court uh, case number. So, leave it as to be announced. I'm just going to go, okay, so I'm just going to go over the letter with you just a little bit here. It says, I am of legal age and competent to make this affidavit. I have a personal knowledge of the facts and matters set forth in this affidavit. And I make this affidavit based on my own personal observations, experiences, and information available to me. So number four, here is where we're going to put in the actual account information. So the reason here for the affidavit of fact and truth is fraudulent collection account from Monterey Collection Services, and there is the account number. So below is going to be a little bit more information about the account. Um, we have the account balance of so the debt that they're claiming that that is old. And here is information on the original creditor. Okay, and it says here, I hereby submit this affidavit of fact and truth in accordance with Fair Credit Reporting Act and seek resolution of this matter. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but what you see here is the um, FCRA violation section. So here is where the actual 609 letter starts at here. And you'll see all the verbiage here. So this is the whole 609 letter here. Of course, Affidavit of Truth kind of starts at the beginning of the letter. And here it says, number 17, I declare that I am not under duress, coercion, or any other undue influence while making this affidavit. I am voluntarily providing this information without any external pressure. I acknowledge that I am signing this affidavit before a notary and I understand the legal significance of taking an oath. So you're going to have this notarized. You're going to print your name and sign your name. Of course, you don't do it until you get in front of the notary and the notary is going to fill out everything else. Now, 
where it comes here where we see where I have exhibit A, exhibit B. So exhibit A is going to always be your driver's license. Now, if you are using this to dispute a collection, do not use your social security card or anything. Don't add anything that can actually help them tie that account to you. Just use your driver's license only. Highly recommend it. So exhibit A is going to be your identification. Exhibit B is going to be the actual collection that they are claiming that is yours in the amount that they're claiming that you owe. Now, you can also include a copy of the credit report um, and things of that nature. Now, here's where it gets good at. Now, exhibit C, if you have experience identity theft and you don't know where the collection came from, what you're going to do is file a complaint with the CFPB for identity theft, not frauds. So there's two ways that you can file a complaint with the FTC. A lot of people get this mixed up and then you get your um, accounts kind of just verified because you actually filled out the wrong FTC report and sent it in. So there's what I call the blue one and then there's one that's like the orange one. So the blue one is fraud. The orange one is identity theft. You are, if you're disputing collections, you're going to want to file an identity theft FTC report, okay? So, and I advise you, this is my disclaimer now. Don't go doing this if you did not experience theft. But, you know, this is just if you have experienced identity theft. So you're going to include that in a PDF form. Make sure that you're not just taking like pictures of the, the FTC report, sending it in because they can kick that back as well. Make sure it's a full PDF form. You want it in the right form. That's important because they they have to run it against their system, eOscar and all that to make sure that it's legit and not like a forged FTC report. So that's why. And so real quick, I'm going to show you how to file the identity theft report. So this is what I call like the orange one. It's actually peach, but whatever. So you're going to start your um, complaint and you say, are you going to click on, I want to report identity theft. So if it's a collection and it's like a credit card collection, or if it's like a car insurance collection, you're going to find what best kind of describes what you're dealing with. So you're going to choose any insurance, medical bills, anything like that, you're going to choose down here. So I'm just going to choose down here just because. Um, oh, and also if it's like rental debt or anything that has to do with rental timeshares or anything like that, you're going to want to click on loans and leases, um, small business loans, mortgages, car loans, stuff like that. So it kind of, you'll find the right thing if you just kind of read here. Okay, so. It says, tell us how um, your information was misused. Okay, so whatever the issue was, find what best match, matches your issue and what happened with you. So I'm just going to say to get medical care. Okay, so continue report. Um, What doctor or company provided the medical services? I'm just going to put, I don't know, a hospital near here. <laughs> Use Wake Med, and um, you're gonna want to go to your credit report so that you get if it's a if it's a medical bill or whatever it is, you're gonna want to have your credit report right there in front of you so you can get as much information off your report to put it on this as you possibly can so that it is accurate. And when you do turn this into the the credit bureaus, they're they're able to match everything because you're gonna there's gonna be a place here where you're gonna put the account number to the a collection that you are actually disputing here. So I'm just gonna say wait med, and I'm just gonna choose some dates here. Um, when did you first notice? the problem so when you first notice a problem i don't care if the collection is five years old you can say hey i just noticed this problem on xyz date it could literally been last month okay um if you know tell us when the medical care was provided you don't have to answer this question because if it's identity theft you may not know when you know this actually went down um if you know, estimate how much money is owed. So if your collection is $2,890, you put $2,890. Okay, no special characters. Okay, so the name of the company representative that you spoke to, this is where you're going to want to put the actual collection agency um, information. 
So I'm just going to use LVNV funding. And um, you don't have to have like the telephone number and email address and stuff, but you can if you have it. Then you're going to click continue. Then you're going to enter your personal information here. Okay, United States. And you're going to enter in a phone number here. I'll use one of these numbers. And so they're going to, if you use a mobile or a landline, it doesn't matter. Make sure that it's an accurate, valid number that you have access to because they're going to send a security code to, to the number. And one second. Oh, oh there it is. I have to get this other phone. Okay. And you're going to enter in. Uh oh, sorry. You're going to enter in the security code and click verify. And you, they're going to ask for secondary numbers and email addresses and things of that nature. You don't have to do all that stuff. Um, who are you filing this complaint for? Yourself, um, your date of birth your month. I'm just choosing random stuff here. Um, street address. You have lived at this address since. Okay. So whatever date you lived at this address, um, has the victim's legal name or address changed since the theft had happened. So you put whatever it has or has not is the victim a military service member, yes or no, click continue. Do you know anything about the person who stole your identity? Now, it doesn't matter if you don't have any idea who committed this theft in your name. Most people don't, so it's okay, okay to click no, okay? And like, even if, like, some people are afraid to say, like, who actually committed fraud because it could be anything going on in someone's life, it's still okay to say no. All right, have you reviewed a copy of your credit report? Always click yes to this. Like, always click yes, because if you haven't viewed a copy of your credit report, then what, what is the complaint about? How do you even know this? So yes. Um, were there any fraudulent accounts included in your credit report? Yes, if you have committed, if yes. Okay, was any person personal information wrong on your credit report? So here's your chance here. Um, most people who have, because most people who are experiencing identity theft have like some suspicious addresses and things like that are on a credit report from when they actually got credit in your name. So if it's an address, you're going to put that in there and then you're going to put one, the address, you know, in whatever. When you apply for credit, the lender places an inquiry in your credit file. Inquiries are listed near the end of your credit report. If you see any inquiries that you don't initiate, that you didn't initiate, please list them here. So here's your chance. If you have inquiries, of course, you put them there. Um, and that's that. I'm not going to go through doing all that. Have you requested a fraud alert? Put it on your credit report. Now, it's okay if you have not gotten that far yet either. And it's okay if you don't, okay? So, it's okay to click no, not yet. Have you contacted your local police department? If you have, you can just click yes. And it'll just, just tell them what department and what state it was in. If you haven't, say no, not yet. It's fine either way. Um, was your personal information exposed in data breach? I always say yes because I feel like everybody in America's personal information and just information period was exposed with Equifax. I just do. So I'm, I'm always put yes. And I'm always put Equifax. Okay. Um, has a debt collector contacted you about the account that isn't yours? Of course they have. Yes. In some kind of way they have, you know, yes, if they haven't, no, but obviously if it's a collection, they're going to contact you or try to, and then you click continue personal statement. Now, listen, the personal statement that you put here does not have to be some long drawn out professional sound in anything. Okay. I have filed lots of these for different clients to help them out with filing. You can literally put anything. You can put, please help me. You can put, please help me remove this fraudulent collection off my credit report. Whatever you want to put there. It could be a sentence. It could be two words, you know, whatever. Just no pressure here when it comes to your personal statement. Okay, so here is the part where you 
overlook your FTC report and you're gonna click the check box to make sure that everything is okay. And then you're gonna click finalize. Now, it's gonna give you the option to create a free account so that you can kind of go in and keep check on your um, complaint or report. It's not necessary that you do. I generally click no thanks, submit without an account. I'm not going to submit this because it's not real. Um, so it says submit without an account and I'll click on that. And then the next page comes up, gives you an opportunity to print it. I suggest that you print it and not only do you print it, but you save it to your computer or your device so that you always have it in case you need it again. So that's as far as I can go without actually filing the FTC report. Um, I hope this helped. Everything will be on the website ready to go for you to download. I hope this helped you. And as I come up with new things, I'm definitely going to share them. So